Hi everybody, I'm back. So I've been away a few weeks and it's uh, been all from being x-rayed to being sick. Your time is valuable, so let's continue with the video. So if someone asked you if you were interested to buy a pill or a medicine that is totally legal with no side effects that has a huge amount of health benefits, would you be interested to buy one? Now, sadly, there are not such medicine out there on the market yet. Instead of buying a medicine, we can actually use real life therapy because it has so huge amount of health benefits. So all it requires is just five to 10 minutes session time for you to get a huge amount of different health benefits, such as brain health, anti-aging effect, joint and muscle pain relief, and muscle gain. And that is just a few of them. So the one good reason why you should own a real life therapy device is muscle gain. So in my previous video on a good, re good reason to buy a real life therapy device, I was talking about arthritis. And when I did my homework then or prepared for that video, I stumbled over an article or a report that I found really interesting. It was a report on total amount of 533 studies. And that was on a total, I think it was 1,045 people This uh, all of this study was covering over. So what was most eye-catching when I was reading this article, and I'm going to quote this, we raised the question if whatever PBM, that is uh, red light therapy, should be permitted to in athletic competition by international regulator authorities. So this article was written back in 2016, but I found it really interesting because this actually proposed that the red light therapy has so many huge benefits that it maybe should be considered to be forbidden to use with sport. So when it comes to banning supplements, I've been around for many years to witness this. All they have to do is to change a little bit and they have to do a bunch of major, uh, have to do a lot of different trials before it gets to be forbidden. I think it's a little bit interesting because Meteor Red Light has actually an article about this that they are declaring that for now red light therapy is not forbidden to use when it comes to combination with sports. But I think this topic is very interesting so I did a little bit more deep dive in this and what kind of result we can get from red light therapy. So what does the science says about this? Well, both red light and near infrared light has proven several times in several studies that it can help you gain muscle and recover muscle also. In the book, I always talk about the ultimate guide to red light therapy are mentioning a lot of different benefits when it comes to muscle recovery or muscle gains. So I'm not going to quote everyone, I'm just going to throw it up here on the screen so you can see them. And I can promise you that I can probably make a video on each benefits that is on this list. But today I only have two studies I want to cover for you guys and some few graphs that I found really interesting. So the first study was made on 34 athletes and they were divided in four groups. One placebo group, one group that got 30 seconds lead light therapy. The third group did a 60 second red light therapy sessions and the fourth group had a 120 second therapy. And this is a study that I found in the book, but what they didn't tell me in the book is if they did the red light therapy before or after they did their exercises. But the studies I've been reading, most of them are actually before workout. So that is just a guess I have that they probably did this. But the interesting thing is if you are gonna take a look on the graphs. So I put a line across the graph here from the placebo group so you can see the difference. There are a huge difference on the group that did a 120 seconds treatment. As you can see on the graph, they increased their repetition by 27% and they actually decreased their lactic acid by 12% compared to the placebo group. So the first thought that I got was that I can probably see almost any sport have a big use for this. 
And another thing that I was thinking was that if they are actually lowering the lactic acid, well, by the way, the lactic acid is a, another word in Swedish. So I'm going to have the day's Swedish word. Lactic acid is mjölksyra in Swedish. And just to get a context how much I have to take an effort for me to learn new English word. But anyway, let's continue. So I was thinking like this is very interesting because if it are increasing the lactic acid, what would happen if you would begin to drink beetroot juice? For you know guys who don't know about beetroot juice, it actually can increase your oxidant uptake for, for up to 15 to 20 percent and this is what something I did when I was competing bigger competition. Another study that I found very interesting was made on 30 healthy men. They used a wavelength of 810 nanometers with a total dose of 240 joules over a week eight weeks period of time and what they did was that they were dividing the men on three group one group that didn't get any exercise and another group just did the exercise and so that they called the training group TG and the group who did the training and the lead light treatment they call it for TLG. So the result was quite significant between the both of the group. We are not mentioning the placebo group. But the group who got the lead light treatment, the TLG group, had a more better result than the TG group. So they measured the muscle volume and the difference was quite interesting that the TLG group got 15.4% versus 9.3%. 4% increase in muscle, muscle thickness. So that shows that on this eight week pe period they gained more muscles than the group who just did the proper training. And this is maybe something I understand wrong on the article. It is my understanding that they also did a strengthening test on the different exercises. So the, dif so the difference here was also quite interesting because when they did the isometric peak torch, the difference was 20.5% versus 13.7%. So that is almost a double doubling uh, effect than the training group. And when it comes to the eccentric peak torch, the TLG group had a 32.2% increase versus 20%. This study clearly proves that after just eight weeks of training with red light therapy has a huge big benefit if you are not doing red light therapy. So I guess that if you are a person who are an athlete or an amateur, time is valuable and if you can get more effectiveness of your training, I think this is a really good uh, solution for you if you want to get good or fast good and fast results. So here's my take when it comes to all of this. It seems like red light therapy has a positive effect when it comes to cardio training and uh, resistance training. It can both help you to increase muscle volume and muscle strength but it also can help you to lower the lactic acid and therefore you will get better stamina and if you get better stamina you can do more repetitions. Petitions. So every time I'm reading this kind of studies about red light therapy, they are always mentioning or almost mentioning the amount of joules, the effect they're using and the wavelength. And that is something I try to get my head around because I would really like to mimic this kind of studies, but I found it very hard to count on. There are so many variables on which kind of distance they were using and device they were using. I was actually making a video about how you could count on the joules. The equation is very simple. You can just take the effect, multiply it with time, uh, the session time, and you multiply it in seconds and you'll get the amount of joules that will be uh, delivered or uh, 
absorbed in your body. But I found more obstacles when I did that video, so I immediately quit quit it because I was thinking if I'm gonna do a video about this, I wanna be 100% sure about what I'm talking about. So when it comes to my device, I actually have in my user guide a picture on where I can see how much energy that will be delivered per square centimeters on different distance from the device. So I started to count on it and immediately when I was counting on it, I found an obstacle um, because I don't know if that pictures are counting on both red and near infrared light. So if I want to mimic um, a study, maybe the study didn't use the near infrared light because I've been reading all from 660 nanometers up to the 905 nanometers on these studies. So I was thinking like that is a very important key factor to know if you're gonna to count on this. So I am back on page one again on when it comes to this topic, but I'm getting a little bit more and more wiser when it comes to this. If you are one of these guys who have figure out how this kind of stuff works, please leave a comment down below and share with us how you're counting. So I think like right now we are maybe are delivering more energy or more joules in our body that is needed. So if you are one of those people who don't own a red light therapy device but want to take advantage of the, all of the health benefits, I can highly recommend you two brands. Block Blue Light and Infrared. They have one of the best panels out there and they have also uh, very innovative solutions too, uh, such as wraps and belts and even flashlights. So you can just bring it with you in a bag. So e even mini panels too. So I think there's a solution for everyone. All you have to do is click on one of the links down below and type in Philip Brandon and you will get 10% discount on anything you purchase. And 90% of the money will be donating to Prostate Cancer Fund. So the end of the fundraise was actually on the end of February, but I have made a decision that I want to extend it a little bit more because we're up about, I think, almost $200 now, and I would really like to be able to donate maybe free to $400. So I will continue with this quest. So guys, that is all for today. Hopefully you found this video useful or even entertaining. And if you haven't done it yet, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.